look at this it's the L Dark 130 GTI and this is after my maiden flight and it's still in one piece so that's a good sign I flew it on three cells and it's like a really good cruiser with three cell batteries I used this here AC 650 and after a five minute flight I have 30% in the tank but I did nice cruising with it it's all pretty much on stock didn't change that much only the OSD setup the pits are okay I flew it in air mode I flew it with the Taranis X Lite as my controller linear dipole as a video transmit, uh, transmitting antenna on 25 milliwatts but it was nice to cruise around what's not nice is the Cadix turtle there is in 16x9 mode which looks skewed on my 4x3 goggles I plan on using this as my main little unobtrusive guerrilla drone that I can fly everywhere without getting too much attention uh, a good thing on 3 cell it's quiet so it doesn't make a lot of screaming noise so it doesn't get too much attention and with the Runcam Hybrid I bet the video will be really good so that's it for my first thoughts after the first fight okay while already taking it apart for the sake of getting out the Cadix Turtle here you can see the build quality I especially like this aluminum cover it's very nice quality diversity receiver that it came with I think there are different options then also well sought out there is an LC filter here for filtering the video so you get not too much noise I will see if I can use this LC filter on the hybrid I guess by turning those motors you see they are quite powerful 1406 3600 yeah the motors are already a bit scratched from my fastening the propellers uh, you really need something like those motor pliers because with your fingers you have no no chance to hold those motor belts while securing the screws left and right threaded thread nuts this is a side by side between Runkim Hybrid the top and Cadix Turtle V2 on the bottom not too much size difference this Runkim Hybrid fits in there I mean you will not get protection of your lens there so it is in danger up there on crashes so you might want to build a 3d printed part that protects this portion it totally did fit there because it's the same dimensions this is the connector the Runkim hybrid should have to be totally plug and play swappable this is the cable for the radio receiver which appears to be the same cable as the video transmitter and the way they stacked this is very clever and the single boards here stack to each other with a connector and it's all it's it's tight but it's accessible and it's very nicely repairable actually so it's not you're not getting a hard time disassembling this to the stage where you can ex access those cables and change them to your own receiver for example and also here you see the connector the UFL I suppose it's a UFL connected to the video transmitter which is accessible there as well you maybe need some hot hot air gun to remove the glue and connect your own video antenna for, I'm not decided yet if I stay on the linear polarized little one or take a better one and it, it still even says kingkongrc.com in one problem though, I cannot have less than this amount of up angle because it's too tight down there. You can have more up angle but not less. Little cable tie for the access cable not to go into the props, which might be important. 
and also the storage card in the hybrid is not really secured in my installation so it might pop out so swapped the little velcro because the velcro i didn't understand it, it didn't have a hook and loop so i really stoked to fly this it has 220 gram width uh, 3 cell 650 so that's really good gives us still some room you can have a 4 cell 6 to 700 and still stay under the 250 gram limits and we are able to record 4k here so this makes it the Mavic Mini competitor but not from the flight time I can say this for sure <laughs> and from the range maybe as well On the first shots here you see the original Cadex Turtle V2 which comes with the copter it is 1080p60 which is fine, HD footage would be fine but the live feed is in 16x9 which is not optimal for my goggles and it's also not very contrasty, very good. Now we swap to the Runcam Hybrid. It could do 4K30 but I'm in 2.7K60 here. I see a drastically better FPV footage down there in the left corner because it's a dedicated FPV cam just and yeah, it's very contrasty, it's very good in light changes, it's a way better experience to fly with this as your live feed. I did one thing wrong here on the Runcam Hybrid. I have my auto exposure measurement to spot or center. Both is not a good idea if you're pointing it upwards to the sky so much. It's way better if you have it in average. At the end or in the description you find detailed settings for the hybrid that worked best for me. And here I fly in a park right at the sunset in the woods. And while flying I didn't notice how dark it actually got because the Runcam races yeah, it handles the light very cool. And the auto low light function uh, worked here, it set me down from 60 frames to 30 frames to have more light on the sensor just and it worked nice. It gave me uh, this motion blur because of longer exposure times and yeah, while it doesn't look great it looks okay and it was fun flying there as well. Hello up here on the church hill, as you see we got some nice sunlight going on here and I want to take advantage of this autumnal scenery here. Let's check it out. And one great aspect of those minis is the little amount of weight that you carry in your backpack and I have a small backpack here. And I just use the X-Lite here, dominators and copter itself in its storage compartment and a few batteries so get this bird in the air happened. You can say you haven't been warned because it's already in the title. A nasty failsafe occurred right when I crossed that roof and I wasn't far away. And no, I didn't get it free there. I had no turtle mode, no nothing. And it was really stuck in those snow fans. After a good 10 minutes of trying, of arming and disarming and trying to move the copter, I gave up or Shall I say the battery gave up because it went flat and from this moment on I knew that I 
needed to get a ladder or some ways to access the roof. Okay guys, this was kind of an unexpected ending of this flight session. I um, guess it's up here. Yellow sign here. Do you see it right in the center there? Something yellow, Does, this must be it. Man, it's really not a, how I planned my lunch break, guys. I hate this. Sometimes I hate 2.4. And I thought about installing crossfire on it, but how can you even fail safe like I was starting over there in the park and then not even 100 meters, not losing line of sight or anything. It just did a damn failsafe on me there. Not sure if this ladder is long enough. Oh my god, this is so sketchy. No, I wouldn't want to climb up there. Uh, it turns out it just is too high for normal ladders. And also the, the roof is quite wet, so it's dangerous to, to kind of climb this, this steep thing here. And it's no way worth the risk. Okay, slightly little update. The ladder was too short, but thanks to Fabridach, thanks Fabridach for sponsoring this episode. We're gonna facilitate this thing here to get up there. Hope this will be a success at the end. It's getting dark quite soon, and the little crane thing is already warming up for its mission. It's like it's getting back a $150 drone with equipment worth many thousand euros. On our way to the rest queue. So this is a RC mission as well, radio controlled, cable controlled. Getting there. In dem kleinen Scheiß. Ja. So dann, der Horst. Super. Okay, after reviewing the crash footage, I wasn't sure if it was really a failsafe. I saw some stars here and it disarmed mid-air. And that was ultimately the cause of the crash. So what could... And my theory was maybe it was too much power drawn from the Runcam hybrid because I swapped it out from the from the Cadix Turtle. So I wanted to just test it here. While the thing is armed, I will now turn off the radio and watch here. Yeah, we saw the stars and now it disarmed, shows us the status. So that's a clear sign of cause of the crash was as I first expected the failsafe thing. So I used the Tarani's x Lite here with the external antenna set and the receiver. And as an external antenna I have a normal 2.4 GHz dipole. I'm just not sure about the range of the Tarani's x Lite and I had crashes with, I think with this little fellow here or with the other micro. Case proved it was a failsafe and it will not happen again to me because I will install the set Crossfire receiver here and hopefully have good range and no issues in the future. As to the crash damage, luckily no crash on the lens happened and I just have a few scratched up props. I mean you could fly with this but not good. And I think it's two of the four props are still okay and this has a few dents. So 
I will swap out two props and be good to fly again. So this proves this 4mm thick carbon here is really good. And also the aluminum. So crash resistant, yes. Reliable for me on 2.4, no. I don't think I would blame the receiver in there. It's a, It has two nice antennas. The dual core AC2000. Yeah, who knows? Who knows which of these components will fail on you. From what I researched, LDRC or King Kong RC, as it was called earlier, they have quite decent, I mean, those are budget, but decent budget components. So I'm hoping for this to be a reliable little copter. And I especially like the fact that those are lower RPMs with bigger props instead of those high RPM, tiny, tiny motors and tiny props, because high RPM will wear the bearings faster. And I kind of want to get past those faily, faily things though. But yeah. Okay, so thanks for watching my review. So this is from review to rescue. <laughs> now that I'm sure it was a fail safe, I will stick with the Runcam Hybrid. So I really hope this will be my go-to copter, my small, always working, reliable one that I can fly just anywhere where the bigger copters might draw too much attention and still get decent footage with the Runcam Hybrid up there. Might order some four cell batteries that fit this quad to see how it performs with, with better batteries. But yeah, cruising around with three cell is quite, quite fun. So if you really want to do acro with this tiny thing, then you need four cells. But if you just want to cruise around and fly like a bird, then three cells is more than enough. You just have uh, to be careful on recoveries. So if you fly over something, you have to up the throttle a bit earlier than you would have to with, with four cells. So that, that kept in mind should keep you safe. With that being said, thanks a lot for watching this review. Hope it wasn't too long. Sure it was, but there was a rescue mission. I challenge uh, Paul Nurk to make another. <laughs> no, you don't challenge a guy to make rescue missions, but uh, go watch uh, Paul Nurkula's videos. He has a few <laughs> awesome rescue missions already on his channel. So thanks a lot for watching as always. See you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>